So in this video, we'll be looking at changes in signal transduction pathways, essentially changes that can happen in the pathway that can cause a different response or cause just no response. And so we're going to look at these in two categories. The first one um, can alter the cellular response with something called a mutation. A mutation is just a change in the DNA. Now, a change in the DNA has a big effect, and we're going to talk about this in a later unit where we'll talk about how DNA uh, moves or how DNA proteins are created from DNA. But we do know already that DNA contains the code for proteins. And so if you mix, if you change the DNA, then you change the protein. And we know also that proteins shape determines their function. And so if you change the protein, you change the function or you break the function. It's like, um, you know, if you have a pair of scissors you, and you just take one of the blades off, that scissors is was just no longer scissors and it can't function anymore. Or if you put a hole in the bottom of a cup, it just doesn't work anymore. So you've changed the shape. You've also altered the function or completely destroyed the function. And so we'll see how that affects the signal transduction pathway. Anytime one of the components of that pathway is broken, the whole pathway breaks down. It's if I unplug my telephone from the wall, there's no longer a pathway. I can no longer receive the signal. Uh, if there's something standing in front of me, between me and the telephone, even if the phone's ringing, I hear the phone ringing, I just can't complete the pathway. And so that you can translate that in myriad ways as we're looking at this. So you have here a normal progression. The There's some sort of signal sent out. These little blue shapes come out, received. All this is, there's the transduction, boom, boom, boom. Cellular response occurs in the nucleus where the DNA is, protein is made. Well, here, this receptor has changed because it's mutated. There's a mutation on the DNA, therefore the shape has changed, therefore it's no longer able to receive the protein. None of this is going to happen as a result of that, and that cellular response is not going to be initiated. Therefore, some sort of cellular function or bodily function is not working correctly. This can have a big effect on the way that a body uh, works. Uh, this can cause uh, diseases, uh, specifically thinking of like uh, cystic fibrosis is a great example of this, in which a protein channel in the lungs is just altered so that certain sorts of ions can't f go freely, therefore causes a concentration change, causes water to go out of the lungs, causing the lungs to fill with fluid, which is not good for that person that has that disease. And so uh, DNA being mutated causes a change in the signal transduction pathway. Chemicals can also can interfere um, with the signaling transduction pathway. I'll give a couple of examples here. So we've talked about neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that complete the pathway of a nerve interacting with its target cell. This target cell could be another nerve. It could be a gland. It could be a muscle. And so here's the nerve. It sends an electrical impulse. Rather than touching this cell directly and causing damage to it, it has this space that um, that electrical signal causes neurotransmitters to be released into that space. Those neurotransmitters are received on the other side, elicits a cellular response, that signal transduction pathway that we've been talking about. Well, if the release of neurotransmitters is inhibited by some sort of chemical, then that is going to break down this whole system. The, um, the system is not able to work. Or if there's something blocking the reception, let's say another molecule is filling these spots, like we talked about um, competitive inhibitors when we talked about enzyme. If there's some sort of competitive inhibitor binding with these spots, then this neurotransmitter is not able to work and it has blocked that signal transduction pathway, which could cause pretty severe issues for the nervous system function. Uh, another example of a chemical blocker is called carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide prevents the final step of cellular respiration. If you remember from cellular respiration, oxygen is the final electron acceptor, and oxygen accepts the electrons that have been uh, going through the electron transport chain, uh, reducing each one of those proton pumps in order to facilitate chemiosmosis to create the production of ATP. Those electron carrier or those electron carriers won't even drop their electrons off if oxygen is not present because oxygen is like the the goal of those electrons because oxygen uh, loves electrons and accepts those electrons. Well, what happens when you breathe in carbon monoxide 
is it will actually bind to one of those stages and prevent the binding of oxygen, which is not good. It will completely uh, ruin the way that your hemoglobin works because hemoglobin will also readily bind or the CO will readily bind to hemoglobin. It's taken to the mitochondria and the mitochondria can't do what they're supposed to do either because the the entire mechanism of where oxygen normally binds is completely broken down and this just doesn't work anymore. Um, blocks oxygen's binding site. ATP is no longer able to be made. And this won't last very long for an organism that needs to make its weight in ATP every day. And so um, that's why carbon monoxide causes death fairly, fairly quickly because it shuts down ATP production pathways and basically causes that all the functions of that organism to shut down. And so this is a good example of how a chemical can block signal transduction and thus cause a disruption to normal function.